Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith here on YouTube. So if you've uh, attended or currently attend a church where it's all about the production value, about the entertainment, because they believe that unless they, you know, make church relevant for, you know, pagans, you know, which means you got to entertain them, you know, and, you know, so if you've been to that kind of church or attending one, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, you've bought into a false premise, by the way. And uh, we'll talk about that in this installment of Fighting for the Faith. Today we're heading over to uh, Fellowship Church in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, uh, one of the original attractional, purpose-driven, seeker-driven churches. Uh, Ed Young adopted this methodology almost two decades ago, maybe more. And uh, he was one of the early innovators, and as a result of it, he's kind of like one of the, you know, the, lead, the, the the elder statesman now of this whole movement and uh, approach to quote unquote doing church, you know, because he's selflessly, selflessly making the church relevant for people who hate Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just weird. Anyway, so uh, we're heading over to Fellowship Church, and we're going to be listening to a part of his message titled Family Circus, the Greatest Show on Earth. But before we get into that, before we get into that, I would like to remind everybody what the Bible says the job of a pastor is. Yep, and no pastor gets to op opt out of it. And uh, the reason I point that out is because, well, uh, no, Scripture doesn't say there's exceptions, but guys like Ed Young and Rick Warren and Joel Osteen and others, they, they all seem to think that they're special because they're vision-casting leaders, and the vision that God has given them for how to do church has kind of opted them, opted them out of actually meaningfully and in-depth preaching and teaching God's Word. It's weird. But uh, here's what uh, Paul writes, uh, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This is Scripture, so God is speaking here. And he says to young Pastor Timothy, who was a pastor of a congregation in the city of Ephesus at the time of this, of this epistle was written by the Apostle Paul, and says this, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who's to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom to preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound doctrine or teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth, and they will wander off into myths. So note that job of pastor, preach the word. No pastor gets to opt out of this. Well, you know, <laughs> why should we preach the word here? That would drive away seekers. <clears throat> we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. But uh, back to, uh, to uh, Ed Young and um, his sermon, Family Circus, the greatest show on earth. And look at the stage value, the production value of the stage there at Fellowship. Wow, I mean, Nothing says, man, you unbelievers, you're in control here than <laughs> turning your church into a circus. Here we go. You know, the first time I ever went to a circus, I was six years old. My mother took my brother and I to Greenville Memorial Auditorium. Mm -hmm. It smelled of stale popcorn. We had great seats. And we watched... Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, the greatest show on earth. How many of you have ever seen or ever attended Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus? It truly is an amazing show. Now from there, I experienced some other circuses in my life and Lisa and I have been out to Las Vegas several times. We've seen Cirque du Soleil. You ever seen Cirque du Soleil? Amazing circus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Circuses are cool. That's why we're doing this adventure week called The Greatest Show. Wow, look at this, don't you love it? So circuses are neat. They're cool, man. Wow. So that's the reason why Fellowship Church 
it has been turned into a, a circus. <laughs> so rather than feeding sheep, he's entertaining goats. Way to go, Ed. That's just great. These stickers, the greatest show. Did you see the movie The Showman? Anyone see that? That was great. That was great. I really like that. I really like that too. But there's, there's nothing like the circus. I remember the tightrope artists. I remember the contortionists. I remember the clowns. I remember the elephants. I remember the tigers. I remember all sorts of things. When I lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! <laughs> you know, I I've seen a couple circuses in my life, and uh, yeah, I. Um, I have no idea what this has to do with making disciples, you know, actually preaching the word the way pastors are told by God in his word to do, you know. It's weird. First experience the circus. Yeah. Circus. You know, since we're just having a conversation, I thought I'd ask you a question. <laughs> you're just you're just having a conversation. Uh, that's called a monologue, by the way, because no one's talking to you, dude. Um you should be actually preaching the word. You know, sermon time is open the word time. You know, you, you remember how this used to be, you know, when you were growing up and you first got into, you know, in the ministry, we'd open up the word and preach the word because, you know, uh, let me remind you of uh, what Jesus says that the church is to be about the business of doing. In Matthew 28, that passage that we're all familiar with, and it's come to be known as the Great Commission. Now, apparently, it's like the Great Omission. Nobody nobody knows what the church is supposed to be doing, you know. But uh, Jesus in Matthew 28, 18 says, um, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus is all, the one who has all the authority. And so the guy who gets to call the shots, here's what he says the church is supposed to be doing. Are you ready? Uh, go, therefore, it's, it, it, go, by the way, is not the imperative. As you are going, it's a participle. So as you are going, therefore, make disciples of all nations. Disciples are learners. What are they supposed to be learning? Well, Jesus will get to that in a minute. Uh, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And here we go, teaching. So disciples are learners, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And since Jesus is God in human flesh, all that he's commanded is going to be found in like all 66 books of the Bible. There's a lot of stuff we got to be covering as pastors, you know, so we might want to get busy, you know, preaching the word the way <clears throat> Paul said it, you know, again, he wrote that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, you're just saying, but we come back to Ed and he tells us about the circus. Would you describe your life as a circus? No. I mean, it's just you and me talking. I mean, it's just like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But would, would, would you say, you know... You know, actually, it's not. It's a total monologue. Why are you saying it's like a one-on-one -on -one conversation? If somebody were to actually speak up and answer your question and try to have a dialogue with you. I think security at fellowship would throw them out. My, my life, Ed, is a circus. It's so crazy people would pay tickets to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're like, yeah, my life is a circus. My family is a circus. Are you just trying to burn time here? I mean, every Sunday when I preach, I mean, before I even hit the pulpit, with the people there have already hit, heard the, the biblical text I'm going to be preaching from. And so when I start preaching, literally I remind them of what they heard, and we go back through a text and work our way through it. Are you familiar with this concept? These are the, This is the way you preach. What, what biblical text... Are you preaching on, Ed? Because it just seems to me like you're trying to figure out how to pass some time here. You know, you're just kind of chewing the fat. I understand that. Yeah. There's a ringmaster in everyone. And 
the three rings. And I remember again watching Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, the greatest show on earth. The ringmaster, he would have everything synchronized and he would pace everything perfectly in ring one and ring two and ring three. Whoa, you know. Maybe you're involved in a family circus. I mean, after all, all of us are members of a family. Ring one, you've got the marriage. How's that, how's that working? I don't know, I'm just asking. Yeah, but you're not expecting a real answer. Two, you've got the family, the kids and all that, and ring three, your career, what you do for a living. I would argue, I mean, I'm not an attorney, but to throw in like one of the favorite words attorneys use, I would argue the family is a circus. You spend a lot of time talking to attorneys. And one of their favorite phrases is that the family is a circus. I apparently don't know that many attorneys. <laughs> Some of you are laughing. You're like going, wow, I, I am a tightrope artist right now. I'm trying to balance life's demands. I'm a single parent, Ed, and you have no idea. I don't, but I'm just suggesting that maybe you're in a circus. <laughs> Others are like, no, I'm a clown. I am a clown. If you saw my life, you would just laugh. Is that funny? I'm a contortionist. I'm a trapeze artist going from one thing to the next thing. And if you saw my schedule for the next couple of weeks, we start school. <laughs> These extracurricular activities is unbelievable. My life's a circus. Now, a little bit of a note here. <clears throat> Romans chapter 3. The whole premise behind the way Ed Young is doing church. Yeah, this is it's known as the seeker-driven approach. Or nowadays, they've kind of lo lost the phrase seeker-driven, and they talk about attractional. It's about being attractional. But uh, here's, the, here's the important thing we've got to understand, is that the entire premise behind this approach to doing church, the whole the, the core assumption is totally wrong, all right? So if I were to ask you, why do pagans not come to church? What would the biblical answer be to this? The answer biblically is because they're pagans, because they are actually dead in trespasses and sins. There's not a single pagan who doesn't come to church because the, the church sings hymns or has an organ or their pastor wears vestments or anything like that. N nothing like that at all. In fact, Scripture is very clear on this. Listen to what it says in Romans chapter 3. So what then? Are, are we Jews any better off? Paul writing to the church in Rome. He says, well, not at all. For we have already charged that all, that's everybody, by the way, both Jews and Greeks, that would be the whole world, they are under sin. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one, no one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they have become worthless, no one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feast are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Yeah, so the whole core assumption behind the seeker driven movement that the reason why pagans don't come to church is because they they don't they they don't feel it's not entertaining and relevant to them no the reason they don't come to church is cuz they're dead in trespasses and sins and they hate god that's literally what the scriptures are saying so ed right here he thinks he's you know letting he's real, he's just letting pagans know how much he cares for them by by basically making the church, you know, entertaining and relevant so that they can come. But you'll note what's missing here. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, like any meaningful, in-depth preaching and teaching on what God's Word says. Yes, I'm a grandparent, and I'm keeping the grandkids, and I'm trying to do this, and starting a business over there. My life is... Is it just me, or do you think the pagans would also find this whole thing that he's doing here to be just annoying? A circus. That's true, isn't it? Let's just be honest. Life is a circus. And when you talk about the family, it's, it's a circus. And so you've made your church a circus. And notice the way you're talking about circus now. It's not necessarily positive. You know, now you know, you're talking about circus like it's something difficult and hard. And you've made your church into that. Jesus. All right. First mention of Jesus, four minutes, 54 seconds into the sermon. But don't worry. There's, there's no Bible to go along with this one. I would argue is the ultimate ringmaster. He's our righteous ringmaster. I know we. No, um, I, in the list of things that Jesus is, you know, Alpha and Omega, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Emmanuel, which means God with us, you know, Savior, Redeemer, you know, friend of sinners. I have yet to see a biblical passage that even remotely refers to Jesus like a ringmaster, because you know what a ringmaster is, right? He's the master of ceremonies in a big show that's meant to entertain you. So calling him our righteous ringmaster doesn't make any sense. He wants to be. And he has an amazing agenda for the family. I'm, I'm talking about the son of God. I'm talking about... So, so the ringmaster. He has an agenda for the... So he, Jesus wants to be the ringmaster of the chaos that is your family circus. You know, the Lord, I'm talking about the whole tenor and tone of Scripture... God desires for the family. Yeah, why don't you spend some time working through the entire tenor and tone of Scripture? You, you know, Sunday after Sunday there at Fellowship. Oh, I know why you wouldn't do that. Because if you did that, you'd drive all the pagans away. Circus, your family circus and mine, to hit on all cylinders, to be synchronized supernaturally, to be paced perfectly. Jesus is wired. He, 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 is, he is the one who needs to hold the microphone to wear the top hat and the red blazer and to to run the show oh man <laughs> just picturing jesus in a top hat and a circus red blazer is doing violence to my mind there dude so he has the best in store for every single family here i love to kind of play mind games with myself and i want you to play a mind game have you ever have you ever just kind of thought about mind games are not a good thing? Huh? What if your family was just like almost perfect? Let's let's just play that game. Okay, just think about your family for a second. Okay. What if it was just this utopic vibe? Everything was hitting on all cylinders and and jesus was the ringmaster then there would be no sin in the world <laughs> what what if what is this and and act one act two act three you got the marriage and the kids and the career and god as the audience whoa it was perfect i mean nearly perfect you know okay close to being perfect but let's just think about that have you ever thought about that before? I have. Have you ever thought about, too, like, what if we lived in a perfect environment? Let me do a kind of sidebar thing. What if we didn't pay any taxes, but we made the politicians pay all the taxes? That would be like the ultimate, wouldn't it? I mean, he's not even 60 years old yet, and he's kind of rambling in such a way it makes me think, 
maybe it's time for like mandatory retirement and put Ed in an old folks home. I just, what is going on here? What if I could do one push up and look like The Rock? <laughs> the ultimate, you know? What if, what if Fruit Loops like made you ripped? What if every fish was a 10-pound bass? What if every time I played golf, I, I birdied every hole? <laughs> this <is> utopic. <laughs> He's lost his mind. He's lost his marbles. What on earth? Culture. Oh. oh, the utopic family. This family that's so amazing. Again, we're just playing games, right? Right. Yeah. I, I've failed to implement the mind game portion of the sermon when I preach. Man, have you seen the marriage? It's almost perfect in this family circus. You've got husbands loving their wives as Christ loved the church. That's what the Bible says we're to do, and that's what the ring map. Yeah, that is what the Bible says to do. I'd like to learn a little bit more about how Jesus loved the church. Their desires. The husband is loving his wife selflessly and sacrificially and steadfastly. I did that alliteration for all the preachers who were here. See, only. Four or five people laughed, and that's about how many preachers we have. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a preacher, and I don't find that even remotely funny. No one else got that joke. And you know, when you're at my age, 57, many times I'll do jokes just for one person. I don't really care if you laugh or not. But those who understand preaching were on the ground. That was hilarious. To yeah, I understand a lot about preaching. Mm -hmm. Do it every week. And I can tell you something. That ain't preaching and it's not even entertaining it's actually kind of creepy and annoying and really weird um what happened to all the promises we received from men like rick warren and ed young and others who brought these innovations into evangelicalism that they would still that that, that they they were they were just changing the method but they were not changing the message I don't even hear the message of Christianity anymore from these churches. Not even close. Uh, but they spend a lot of money, though. I mean, how much do you think it costs to deck the stage out like that? <clears throat> yeah. So there you go. If you found this helpful, uh, please share it. Found it awkward? Please share it. That's kind of the point of this video. Uh, and, uh, in, you know, of course, all the information on how you can support us so that we can continue bringing resources like this uh, to you into the world. All that information is down below in the description of this uh, video. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.